Dear Singer Printing Company, I own an antique store that specializes in vintage postcards, toys, and other collectibles. I'm writing in regard to the flyer you sent me about the series of postcards issued by Patterson's Bread Company in 1900. I'd be very interested in buying some sets at the price mentioned in the flyer, $1.29. I'm guessing this is either a misprint or a one-time promotion, so I'm including the flyer with the price circled in red. I'm not going to hold you to it if it's a mistake, but on the chance that you have a few sets and have decided to sell them at this price as a promotion, I'd like to order six. John, Ethan, dinner. Okay, I'm coming. Someone must have kept these in a bank vault for the last century. These are in unbelievable condition. You said a bread company created them? Yeah. In Hartford, in, in 1900, they would put one postcard in each loaf of their bread. The eight postcards showed scenes predicting what life in America would be like in the year 2000. I'll come and take a look at this. Move your hand. Personal flying machine. Machines that controlled the weather. What do you think they're worth? That's the crazy thing. Manchester's Guide to Collectibles lists a set of these as $600. And that's if they're in just fair condition. But these, these are mint. No creases, perfectly square corners. How much did you say you paid for them? Dear Singer Printing Company, Enclosed is a check for $7.74 in payment for the six sets of postcards you recently sent me. Thank you so much. I'm still convinced this is some kind of error on your part. I was astounded that they were in such great condition. Could you tell me if, in fact, they are originals, as the flyer you sent me stated? I looked again at the flyer and see a number of other postcards I'd be interested in. Can you really sell complete sets of the 1918 Eastman Clever cards for just $1.29? By the way, do you have a website? Appreciatively, John Harris. Dear Mr. Harris, we are in receipt of your letter and are sorry to say our bank could not cash your check. We are therefore going to be unable to send you the additional postcards that you expressed interest in. First, you must send us a bank check or cash for the previous order. Again, the total owed is $7.74. And to arrest your fears, the postcards we sent are from the original print run. Also, I don't know what you mean by website. Respectfully, Mrs. R. J. L. Singer, Singer Printing Company. John, it's past eleven. I'll be up in a minute. You aren't taking the date on that letter seriously, are you? No, not really. Just one more thing I gotta do. Dear Mrs. Singer, I hope this isn't too odd a request, but could you tell me what the date is on the day you received this letter? I saw the date on your previous letter to me was October 28th, 1919. The postmark on the envelope said the same thing. I've included a copy of both as proof. The reason I ask is that as I write this letter to you, it's not close to those dates and I can't explain it. Sincerely, John Harris. Dear Mr. Harris, I'm the owner of the Singer Printing Company. Your letters were passed on to me by my wife, and I can confirm the dates on the letters we sent you are correct. October of 1919. Yet I look at your letters to us, and 
Clearly 1919 is not the year on them. They would seem to be from next century. Further proof of our problem is that the richness and sharp registration of the color in the letterhead of your letters cannot possibly be achieved by my press or by any press I have ever heard of. Based on your latest letter, I'm guessing you may already be coming to the same conclusion I'm reaching. Clearly, I can't explain what's happening any more than you can, but reality is reality, whether we can explain it or not. And if this is our reality, I have an unusual suggestion. I'm a businessman, and I have contracts to print letterhead stationery for such groups as the Portland City Orchestra in Maine. I've enclosed a sample of stationery for the orchestra. Can you redesign it and add some color so that it looks like your letters to us? If so, perhaps we can trade services. I can send you the postcards you want, and you can print the stationery I need, so long as this new reality continues to exist. Sincerely, Mr. R.J.L. Singer. Dear Mr. Singer, I have to agree with you. What we can't explain is not necessarily something we should dismiss. And yes, I'm a businessman too, and if this is our particular reality, then let's take advantage of it. I redesigned the Portland City Orchestra stationery you sent me, and closed as a sample. If this is acceptable, let me know and we can arrange what we'll be sending back and forth. Sincerely, John Harris. Dear Mr. Harris, the sample you sent me of the Portland City Orchestra stationery is incredible. Enclosed are 25 sets of the 1918 Eastman Clever Card series you expressed interest in, as well as a selection of other postcards you might want to consider. In return, can you send me 300 copies of the Portland stationery? I've also included a sample of the program for the Brattleboro August Outdoor Shakespeare Festival. I'm sure you can improve on it. Can you send me 500 copies once you're done? About our situation, I feel that the fewer questions asked, the better. Sincerely, Mr. R.J. L. Singer. Dear Mr. Singer, I'm sorry I haven't been able to write you in the last two weeks. I had to spend a night in jail in Northampton and then several days in that city while I met with lawyers and went to court. I attended a collector's show in Northampton to sell the sets of Patterson's Bread Company postcards you sent me. Unfortunately... The condition of the postcards was so exceptional that I was arrested on various charges, mainly selling fraudulent documents. A buyer tested the paper and ink of one set I sold him and found they were less than a year old. I was so upset that I drove to the Registry of Deeds office in York County this morning and found that the Singer Printing Company occupied the building at 28 North Maple Street in Turner's Falls from 1898 to 1938. Then I drove to Turner's Falls to find the building. It's now home to several craft studios and a beer brewery. However, after several sleepless nights, I think I may have arrived at a way we can salvage our situation. I have a request. Instead of sending me additional items through the mail, could you do the following? Could you take 20 complete sets of the 1907 June is the Time to Wed postcard series and put them in a well-sealed cedar box? Then measure exactly a 100 feet directly back from the one door in the rear of your building. The location is on the edge of a field in my time, so it should be in a field or on the edge of one in your time. Bury the box so the top is 6 inches beneath the ground surface. In return, I'll print 500 copies of the Brattleboro Festival program and send them to you in the mail, as we have been doing, so the items will be brand new when you get them. I'll drive up to Turner's Falls again in a few days, and we'll dig up the buried box after dark when the building is empty. I'm confident the postcard paper will be sufficiently aged that I can sell the collections without a problem, ending my financial stress and allowing us to return to doing business as we have been. Sincerely, John Harris. 